come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that's the fastest growing movie review podcast on the internet. Yeah, no disagreement. Prove us wrong. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. I want evidence. Um, <laughs> little housekeeping. Do us a favor. Wherever you found us, uh, go over there and give us a uh, like or a star rating, a review, or uh, hit that subscribe button because all of that helps us uh, become the fastest growing. This is our new goal, right? Is to become the fastest growing movie review podcast. It's not a goal, Colin. We have achieved it. There you go. We are the fastest growing. Until, until I hear otherwise. Yeah, yeah, until go. someone says otherwise, I mean, come on. That's right. Because we know if, for sure <laughs> that we already are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. Holly, are, you either look tired or you're thinking about this movie. I can't tell. Because <laughs> you look deep in thought. You're just like... What the fuck is going on? In my life? <laughs> it might be both. <laughs> you might have done it to her. Happy Halloween, by the way, oh, yeah. and that means well, I don't know. it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's yeah, the month of is. Halloween. I was gonna say it's the only time you should celebrate on the whole month of anything. Yeah, I really. think so. Yeah, it's Halloween. That's it. Yeah, it's that's where it starts it. and ends. Yeah, I usually get started like in September. Same. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Michaela. Michaela, uh, what special movie did we watch tonight? We watched Don Coscarelli's Phantasm. Oh. From a year? 1979. It is the 40th anniversary of Phantasm this year. Damn. Oh, 40th yeah. anniversary, wow. 40 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Phantasm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so Phantasm. Phantasm. I know a lot of you are probably sitting around going like, how the hell has it happened that you haven't gotten to this movie before now? I was afraid to bring it because I didn't want my feelings to get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it so you feel safer it. now? You're <laughs> well, in a much better place? I, there was a couple listeners that were like, yeah, but it'd make a great episode, and there's a lot to talk about, and it's definitely a freak show. We, they talked me into it, so I was like, okay, okay. all right, I can mm-hmm. toughen up for one episode. <laughs> when did you first see Phantasm? 1998. I was eight years old. Eight at eight years mm-hmm. old. Holy cow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. So it was a memorable. It uh, yeah. well, set oh, us yeah. up. What were you doing? How um, did this happen? This is my dad's favorite horror movie. My dad saw it in, the th- in theaters. He saw it at the drive-in. Um, and he was kind of like obsessed with it because this is right after Halloween came out. So a lot of movies were just knocking off Halloween and this movie doesn't do that at all. No. And so he like, it always just like stuck in his memory. Like that's like the most original movie I've ever seen. And, uh, so he, my dad thought that the best approach to showing my sister and I horror movies as a kid was to show us clips out of context and mm. that, that would make it less scary. It doesn't. <laughs> it's, it's, it's probably worse, actually, if you don't have context for things. So he'd just show me, like, he started with, like, the the picture of, like, the tall man in the antique shop where it, like, kind of comes to life a little bit. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Mm. And then he showed me the finger in the box. I think that's what the um, Nazis did to, like, as experiments in yeah, Germany. They're like, just like, right? stop him down, show him things. Yeah, just show him random <laughs> clips of yeah. shit. Yeah. And then, uh, like, I worked my way up to this sphere scene, basically. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I was like, well, I need to know how this all works together. And then. I but what he do? Movie, just so. like have a VHS and pause it and yes. call you in the room? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my dad was. A, well, my dad's an electrical engineer, so he's like always up on like technology and like modifying things and opening things up and fixing them and stuff. So we had a Betamax player, so it was pausing the Betamax, sure, Whoa. and then call. You got to have Phantasm yeah. on Beta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was the superior format mm-hmm. to VHS. I just want to say that right now, better picture quality. Mm-hmm. Oh, there yeah. you go. That's um, right. But I feel it lost like- the award of whoever it was Phillips or. Yeah, well, Sony, again, you can thank porn for that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that is uh, that feels like the same experience I had when I first watched this movie. I was just like <laughs> of watching it out of context, like what the fuck is going on? Because you saw it at the drive-in. I saw it at the drive-in. I realized tonight I was probably nodding off during that, so it was basically seeing clips. <laughs> yeah, out of context. yeah, exactly. You're <laughs> that like, was my first experience mm-hmm. with this movie. Well, and like that's that's the thing. Drive-in culture for us now is like such a novelty mm. that like I don't. I don't know about you, but when I go to the drive-in, I plan on staying for a long time and getting drunk. So, like, I'm not, I'm not really going there to like. It's not a great situation to watch a movie for the first time. No, you it's know? not. Because you want to pay attention. You want to be with the movie. At and that there's point. a lot of disruptions at the drive-in. Right. Like, there's Plus, always someone with their headlights on. There's yeah. always people yeah. who are just like. It's Driving not a good. No, I it's find a, I find the social, drive-in really distracting. It's like a social it's, experience. I'm not, yeah, I'm Absolutely. not going to go there for a first time movie. No, like my friend told me today he was going to go for like the the double showing that they're going to have of the Joker and it too and and wherever they're showing. Oh, terrible idea. And I was like. 
that's a horrible place to watch those movies yeah. for yeah. the first time. No. Especially something really long like it. Yeah. Chapter two, like you don't want to sit at a drive-in for that long no. for one movie. Death Race 2000 is probably the movie you go for <laughs> if you're going to go to well, the drive I mean, it used to be because I, I you know, was in the heyday of when there was a drive, well, I, the end of the era of the drive-in, I guess, but we'd go there all, all the time and you wouldn't really go to watch the movie. It was right. like yeah. a hangout place. Yeah. With a movie, it's a social right, yeah. in the background. Yeah. Now yeah, it is like when I go to the drive-in, it is like you know for a special occasion or something, mm-hmm. but rarely to see a movie first run. I don't yeah. like that experience. No. Yeah. I'd rather see it in a in an actual theater. Yeah, Indeed. that's not to say that I don't like the drive-in experience. Good God, no, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's fun. great, but it's yeah, it's just like a lot of times there's sound issues mm-hmm. too, and like there's just too many um like variables to make it a good thing, especially like. Like you never want to see a Nolan movie at a drive-in. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah. like you want I mean, that surround. Yeah, yeah I was saying, like, let's be real. You're getting shit sound. Yeah, exactly. Like, yes. Yeah, you just are. No, Not you to need mention, to see a movie yeah. you've seen a million times. Right. Yes. Like, when they did well, at least the Texas guys... Chainsaw 4K. That was that's like yeah. yeah there you go. Perfect yeah. movie mm-hmm. to go yeah. see up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, because we go to a, a regional drive-in theater that does like a horror movie, uh, you know, all nighter every year or several times a year sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, those movies are like these were made for the drive in and you can see them again. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but Phantasm, so yeah, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I came to this like really young son on, on TV. It made absolutely no goddamn sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then I saw it again later on VHS and have uh, somehow ended up watching this every just about every year. This is part of the annual uh, watch of Phantasm. This is my Halloween night movie. Like this is, is what I, yeah. This, this is, is what you put on when the trick. My sister come comes over? over because she's equally as obsessed with Phantasm too. Because my dad did the same thing to her, and she's younger than me, so she was even more like impressioned. I'm sure. But um, she comes over and we watch Phantasm, and she usually brings McDonald's and wine, and then we hand out candy, and that's like our Halloween tradition. Yeah, that, 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 that is so cute. <laughs> Kayla, what is a Phantasm? I have no idea. I was going to say, as it relates to this movie, <laughs> I'd also like to It could to mean anything. Just make up something, and that's sure. That's it's a, I, think, I think it's a tall a, man. A ghost or an illusion. Mm-hmm. Something illusionary mm-hmm. or something illusory. Um, which kind of does, it's an apt title for this movie. So this is the brainchild, Don Coscarelli. He mm-hmm. was a one of those guys that we call like a regional filmmaker, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, regional filmmakers back in the 70s were people who made movies Generally, they would have a cast from the state that they were made in. They would usually play within like a three or four state, you know, neighboring area. What was his first movie? I can't remember. Jim, the world's greatest. Okay. And it was Kenny and company after that. Kenny and company. Okay. Yeah. And those like literally the same five people that are in this movie were in those two movies Mm -hmm. as well. So. I believe it. Reggie mm-hmm. seems like a guy who's just going to keep showing up in Don Coscarelli movies. Yeah, oh, all of them do. The, all of them. This do. whole movie, I was like, he is the Clint Howard. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he right. Is. Yeah. Well, he becomes Reggie's... like way more central in the. Sequels, yeah, he is the is main character of the yeah. sequels, and really? he basically got a kind of a, a cult following, probably second only to like Bruce Campbell in the Evil Dead movies. There was Reggie from the Phantasm mm-hmm. uh, movies. Damn. Um, he has like a three barrel shotgun in like the second movie, right? Yeah. Like the guns takes, get more ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a four barrel. He takes two shotguns, puts them together, and then saws them the That's point into like a, <laughs> uh, a half triangle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, yeah. 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 This sounds. Oh, uh, the movies are crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Coming from this guy. Well, okay. So Don Coscarelli, mm-hmm. he also, we would probably know him from John Dies at the End, Bubba Hotep. Yeah, recently, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, the Beastmaster, Beastmaster, was, uh, yeah. another like cult movie. Oh, that, okay, is, is, that one I know. Mm-hmm. I think that one might be more. Is it more famous than Phantasm? More people seem to have seen Beastmaster. I think that a lot of people mm-hmm. know the title. Yeah. I don't know if people have seen it, but yeah. I think they've heard of it. It was a cable movie staple yeah. at yeah. one point in time. Oh yes. Um, but Phantasm, like, do we know where the hell this came from? Like, what was the idea? The genesis of the project. I'm glad you asked, Colin. I'm reading Don Coscarelli's uh, biography right now, True Indie. Uh, it's great. Uh, the audiobook is read by him, which is awesome. And uh, so he did Kenny and Company and Jim, Jim the World's Greatest, and those are both like slice of life dramas. I'm sure they're great, but I don't personally have any interest in watching them. Mm. Um, and those were really well received and 
everyone's just like, man, this this kid, he's like the hot new thing. And like, but he wanted to like really have like a hit that made some money. And like at the time, you know, like I said, Halloween had just come out. He was making a fuck ton of money. And he was like, oh, it's like you can make a horror movie for really cheap and make a ton of money. Yeah, because Halloween was an indie movie yeah. also. And uh, he and he's like, I do love horror movies, so I'm sure I can write one. And so he wrote, directed, edited, shot. Everything in this movie is done by him. Like, yeah. he, And he was 23 years old at the time. Could you imagine? And he'd already made two movies at that point. Well, how old it's is, insane. Uh, fuck this guy. How old was um, uh, Sam Raimi when he made, he was like 23 when mm-hmm. he made Evil Dead, right? That seems to be like one of the, the age when you mm-hmm. get going. And like, then you're like, what have I done with my life? We, I was going to say, we have wasted our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But, but Don had a, a, a nightmare about the tall man like chasing him down like this long marble hallway with like spheres. And so he started with that and kind of right, reverse engineered everything. That's so. where I was like, mm-hmm. okay, he mm-hmm. thought I can make a horror movie, but where the fuck did this come from? Mm-hmm. Now you're talking. Mm-hmm. A nightmare. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, because it. it feels like a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very dreamlike quality. It, yeah, it's very, very movie very, yeah. that comes to my mind that you could like even say because this is the thing with Phantasm. I think that I like about it is uh, it's like well, if you try to describe Phantasm to somebody else, it's kind of like what do you say? What comes next I, in that sentence? I tell them like <laughs> you could just tell them it's like it feels like a bad dream where there's just like. You don't know why he's scary, but there's a very tall man chasing you. Yeah. And you're afraid to death. Of I tell them it's like having that nightmare where like you're running away from something and keep tripping and falling down or you can't mm. run fast mm. enough. It's like mm-hmm. that as a movie, but also you're a kid and no adult will believe you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it has that. Also, Although, there's a seer that will drill into your head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It shares a kind of a quality in my mind, I guess. Like I always think of uh, Dario Argento's Suspiria, like mm-hmm. in Phantasm, kind of in the same. They operate on the same level of like dream logic. Like they are both filmed nightmares. Yeah. And, you know, uh, so that means that with both movies, you have to kind of go into them with the idea that maybe they're not going to make a whole lot of logical narrative sense mm. from scene to scene. That's key. Yeah. I, I think I figured it out, though, because Callan, you and I, we have both what hundreds of times mm. we've seen this. Over, many, I, I know I've many. crossed the hundred mark. I know for sure I've oh, crossed wow. the hundred. Okay, yeah. like, but well, I mean, it's going back twenty years, you yeah, know. Yeah. So, um, I think I think I've figured out like the best way to kind of like describe what's happening in this movie is like this is like proto Pennywise, basically. Like he's an alien. He can kind of take whatever form he needs to get his shit done. And if ki- when kids start fucking with him, he fucks with them back. I think okay. that's like the okay. most concise okay. way I can explain yeah. the tall yeah. man and the way he exists. Okay. There's also a scene in this where, as you mentioned before, in an antique shop, our protagonist Mike finds an antique photo that animates and you get to see uh, uh, yes. the tall man in it, mm-hmm. which was also used in uh, the It miniseries. Yes, mm-hmm. indeed. Uh, actually, I think I saw that in a bunch of like 70s sure. you know, era movies. Yeah. The yeah. photograph comes to life. Yeah. Yeah. You've seen that. Um, so yeah, the movie uh, plonks us down, plonks us, plonks us down somewhere sure. in Oregon. Mm-hmm. I feel plonked. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> where we meet uh, two brothers. One is um, Mike, and the other <laughs> is down, huh? oh, I'm say, oh, <laughs> Jody. Jody. I was going to say Bill, but Bill, Bill Thornberry, Thornberry is the actor. Yeah, and, yeah, and Michael Baldwin mm-hmm. playing Mike mm-hmm. and Jody. Mm-hmm. And Reggie is Reggie, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, Reggie's yeah. Reggie. Reggie's Reg. Reggie, who the fuck? Who is this Reggie character we're talking about? He's an ice cream man mm-hmm. with a ponytail. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's a bald man with a ponytail. I love the amount of color his character has. I love that they're like, yeah, let's just, it might be weird, but fuck it. He's an ice cream dude. And That's he, why I'm thinking of Clint Howard. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, that yeah. kind of looks like him. He kind of looks like him. Like and a combination between yeah. him and like Dean Norris. That's He's why. filling the same role that Clint yes. Howard would fill for right. sure. Yes. I like okay. how he just puts a leather vest over yeah. his ice cream man. Yeah, 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 you yeah. gotta look professional and self <laughs> with his hand. bow tie and everything. Yeah. It's that's an awesome really look. Yeah. Reggie. I suppose that's why we remember him, right? Yeah. But he's also like this movie has a, a very uh counterculture hippie vibe going through it because mm-hmm. of the year probably it was started shooting in seventy six, I think. And Bunch of goddamn hippies. Out. Yeah. So Everybody's got feeling hippies. groovy and you know, I don't get off on that, man. It's, it's a weird trip and all right. that other stuff. Um so there's some at the beginning of the movie. The catalyst is, I guess, that uh, one of their friends, the trio in their group, who uh, uh, dies, is murdered. Mm-hmm. Well, they don't Tommy. know that he's murdered. Tommy mm-hmm. dies. He's killed yeah. in the opening scene by a blonde woman in a lavender dress, just, who is credited as the lady in lavender. Because there, there you mm-hmm. go. Just stabs him in the. As they're yeah. making nookie in the graveyard, because mm-hmm. that's what you do. Mm-hmm. 
Nookie in the Graveyard. That's the name of our Halloween album. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nookie in the Graveyard. Gross. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Tommy goes the to music the music video can just be every scene where they're having sex in a graveyard <laughs> from every horror movie. <laughs> Is there a lot of those? I think there's a lot more than you think there are. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know. I w- well, I wouldn't just say I wouldn't say just horror movies. No, not though. just horror movies. Just it happens Return a lot. Of the just... Living Dead count, just running around naked in a graveyard. Mm-mm. Okay, it's just going to be that. That's the music video. <laughs> yeah, well, that pretty much was a music video. <laughs> yeah. Um, Very true. So this takes place at the Morningside Mor- Morningside Cemetery or Mortuary. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Where strange things are immediately afoot because after the funeral, uh, there's this tall man played by the actor Angus Scrim, mm-hmm. who picks up the coffin with one hand and loads it into the hearse. Angus Scrim, which is just a great name mm-hmm. for a character, let alone having that be his real name. True or false, mm-hmm. that is his actual name. It's got to be. I think it is. Okay, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll ask did Google. All the, the I'll ask Google. I'm pretty sure it is. I can't imagine he'd make that up. I mean, what is... Come on. I don't know. Engelbert like Humperdinck a, made up his name. That's yeah, very true. And Scrim On being, purpose. That's you would only choose term. that name. Like, like <laughs> you'd have to have real shitty parents name you that. Right? <laughs> well, he was born Lawrence Rory Guy. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Angus Scrim is a better sounding stage name. It is way better. better. Uh, Angus Scrim to see what, what, what do you know about him? I mean, this is obviously the movie that made him a viable horror commodity. He never really seemed to do much beyond the Phantasm movies. You know, he's a Coscarelli regular through and through. He's been in, I think, every single one of his movies. Yeah. yeah. Um, even like he had like a really sh- like blink and you miss it cameo in Jen dies at the end. But um, he's in the TV show, The Masters of Horror, that he mm-hmm. did the incident on and off of Mountain Road, which is the best episode of that show, maybe. Debatable. I think okay. so, but it's. I've it's, seen a lot of bad Masters of Horror, yeah. so I'm going to say yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was the first one. You know why they yeah. make it the first one? Because it's the one that's like it's going to lure you in. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah, and before you know it, you're yeah. watching Meatloaf cut skin off. <laughs> you want some more? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Angus Scrim, obviously, mm-hmm. he, like I remember seeing this guy became like a staple of uh, Fangoria conventions mm-hmm. on the success of this movie, where he would basically. You know, compare this role to like uh, the Frankenstein monster. Mm-hmm. He, he was basically this generation's Boris Karloff. I met him at the, uh, they did, there was a 35th anniversary of Phantasm at a local convention uh, five I think years I was ago. There. I, w- I went and I met him and he, and they, I went to the panel and he said that every other day of the year he's just like, because he lives in like a small town in California, he's just the guy that lives on a corner that walks his dog at the same time every morning. And then he like comes to these conventions and he's like, a celebrity and mm-hmm. like it's like it's really weird to shift between these like two lifestyles of being this like quite old man that walks his dog and the tall yeah, man. I mean because mm-hmm. he never really got famous outside right. of the horror genre. Yeah. Like a mm-hmm. person on the street would not recognize him most likely. I mean Phantasm I believe did have a sizable it was a successful movie in Gigantically 1979. successful. How you guys so? want you guys want to take a guess at a uh, budget versus box office in this movie? Budgets like for 1979, mm. like three million dollars. Say three million. No, we're gonna go lower. I was gonna say well, nine hundred thousand dollars. I was gonna say maybe a million. One point five million. The budget was three hundred thousand dollars. Just like Halloween. It made twelve million dollars. Wow. Wow. This movie was a hit because it was yeah. picked up by M- Fco Embassy mm-hmm. Pictures, right? So it did actually get a multi-theater release. I mean, this Correct. was a legitimate movie mm-hmm. uh, yeah, release back that music. Then. Mm-hmm. That alone should Yeah, the soundtrack is fantastic. It's really good. I believe there is a disco unexpected. remix. Mm-hmm. I think the B-side. I seem to remember mm-hmm. like a, it had a B-side release. Yeah. Like a, you can get a 45. <laughs> nice. With the theme on one side and the, the disco version on the, the other side. Disco version. Yeah. I have the uh, Waxwork Fred, Fred Records Myrow. release of the oh, nice. Does it have soundtrack. the disco thing on it? I don't think so. Because I think, because it doesn't even have Sitting Here at Midnight on it. It's literally just the score oh, for damn. the movie. Hmm. Yeah, it's, but they had like, so they had like two variants. They had like the Mausoleum Marble and then they had like a the blood nice. like a blood and like color one and the marble one like I missed that one by like seconds it was like in my cart and then it was gone so no, but I got wow. the got the regular one at least I wonder if you could track down the old classic cuz I'm mean, at the time the movie came out right there was mm-hmm. a, a 45 I don't think there was a full soundtrack but I could be wrong mm-hmm. but the phantasm theme was enough to you know mm-hmm. get a release um so uh Mike is a 13 year old kid mm-hmm. Uh, Jody is probably in his late teens, early twenties. Twenty-four. Mm-hmm. There's um, a, going by his uh, what call it? His uh, oh, grave, the, grave marker. The grave marker. Yeah, he's twenty-four mm-hmm. years old. Oh yeah. Okay. You're right. 
Good call. Did the math real quick. So, so you're saying they did better math than Texas Chainsaw 3D, right? Definitely. They didn't, they didn't yes. fuck it up that yeah, bad, no, huh? It's not a 45 year old. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. It's not a surprise that all of a sudden he's supposed to be like 50, and we're yeah, like, wait, what? Like, what? <laughs> wait, he's older than their parents were. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Mike is a resourceful individual. Um, I'm saying this kid is my spirit animal because... Did you ride your dirt bike through the cemetery? Uh, Did you want to? Because I would definitely I want to. to. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's no cemetery close. But I don't yeah, there is. There's a couple really yeah. close. Yeah, real big ones okay. with nice well, hills. I was like, there's could, a pretty big one not yeah. far from here. Yeah, I remember driving a Some car. Some nice hills on it, that but, one. Okay. Yeah, that's good enough. Didn't read, ride the dirt bike. But this Colin's kid, remembering a funeral. Yeah, he, mm-hmm. <laughs> he uh, and I think this is why it's like you know the the this kid lives like the dangerous secret world of boys. Yeah, where at 13 years old, and I don't know how realistic this is because this wasn't me, but I'm saying that this is you know like whatever kid. I think wishes and probably why the movie was a cult success because the younger you are, when you see it, mm. I think you do relate to Mike. Uh, he not only he repairs cars, uh, he seems to know everything about engines more so than his brother does. Mm. He uh, is able to use firearms with uh, very adeptly yes. shotguns and, uh, and, and just Colt allowed 45. to use them. Yes. He gets to drive a Barracuda. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which we got to come back to this. Yeah. Uh, we can't just leave the Barracuda out there no. and not address it. Um, he's swilling beer while well, he takes drinks of beer and he drives. Yeah. You said drives the Barracuda and drives a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. He mean, doesn't have any parents, so no one to tell him no, really. Right, it's like, true. Right, because their parents mm-hmm. have died in a car wreck mm-hmm. or something too. Before the movie before. started, yep. Yes, mm-hmm. okay. Right. So, Jody's not in town a lot, right? Right. He's elsewhere. And Mike stays by himself? Mike stays with Myrtle? I was going to say, it's Myrtle. Is this where Myrtle comes in? It's, it's got to be. be what's going Possibly on here. Yeah. Housekeeper? I th- yeah, or, uh, she's a credited fam- as a family ha- friend. No, she's credited as housekeeper. Oh, it, it, yeah, it's gotta be then. Because so they're just... definitely rich. Like you see that house, they're the definitely rich and in the car. Yeah. yeah, and like the fact that like they're like neither of them really have any responsibility. They just kind of right. dick off all the time. Like right. they had to have at least gotten like a nice inheritance. Or sure, something. I think yeah. there's also yeah. that. Yeah. Yes, so they can just do whatever. And mm-hmm. the parents were buried up at Morningside mm-hmm. Cemetery. Where strange things or are so were they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. So this becomes the thing, I guess. Uh, Mike, I think, is the person who's the most like keen to what's happening. That there is something strange going on. Up Kids always are. Because they're, they're, mm-hmm. they're young. They, mm-hmm. they, 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 this stuff just, you know, they pay attention to it more. They don't have the rest of life kind yeah. of blocking all that out. They don't brush things off like adults do. Right. You lose yeah. all that magic when you grow up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is like, it predates like an Amblin movie, but it's tapping into the same thing in like a weird nightmare version of it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's probably, I'm telling you, this is part of the reason for its massive success. But um, he ends up sneaking into the, because uh, he's all suspicious of like, this tall man's doing weird shit. Picking up so he picked up a casket on yeah. his own and loaded yeah. it into the car. So he sneaks into the mortuary at night. <laughs> sneaks. He busts open windows. Well, he also gets thrown off his bike, too, because he's riding the dirt bike around the cemetery, and then, yeah. like, he loses, he loses control, control and, and gets thrown yeah. off. And... Yeah. Because that's how I was I was laughing inside when you were like, that's really disrespectful. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. so you're on the side of the tall man. Yes. Yeah, I, was thinking, <laughs> I am that. absolutely on the side of the tall man. the tall man was thinking the same thing. He's like, you fucking disrespectful yeah. little shit. Little punk-ass yeah. bitch. Yeah. You don't yeah. do that. What? He's not driving over anything. Dun, dun, dun. No. Oh wow! Good point, Sean. Good That's point. That's true. That's but the tall true. man's got to keep up the charade sure, of like, yes. this is a normal cemetery. Yeah. Don't look over here. Of he's he's yeah. got to act course. like he's pissed because yeah. you know any other. He's got to be able to get off my lawn. You know. Yeah. <laughs> he's the groundskeeper. Exactly. At this point. Well, what does he find inside this mortuary after hours? What's going on in there? First, can we just say that he has no problem with breaking and entering? I mean, not when I was a kid, I would not have had the guts to do that. He no. has no parents to tell him it's yeah, like because bad. Because this kid <laughs> is uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> he's an adventure kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He doesn't give a fuck. No, it's he true. gets into adventure. That's what, yeah. And by the way, I just want to point out all you kids listening right here, okay? Oh, we and have kids that listen? That's right. Shit. We have 13 year olds. 
And we're talking to you because in movies, you're going to see a lot of people kicking in windows and then they crawl through windows and do all this awesome stuff with windows. That's candy glass. It's made out of sugar. It's fake. Yeah. It's for the movies. You try that in real life, you are slicing an artery and you are going to die. Yep. Just yeah. FYI public service yeah. announcement. Yep. Yeah. Watch the nice guys. That shit's real. Oh my. Yes. That's the best yeah. part of that movie. <laughs> yeah. That's what will happen. It's right? true. I love that movie. That's a great movie. <laughs> That's right. Nothing in movies is real. It's a representation of reality. Okay. Yes. So Mike breaks in, mm-hmm. and in there he finds these little hooded dwarfs, Jawas. Yeah, Jawas. Basically. Okay, yeah. the Jawas. Yeah. The Jawas. Yeah. Yeah. Jawas. Yeah. How dare Don Coscarelli rip off Star Wars' the most <laughs> successful movie of 1977? Michaela, you're on the hot seat. Um, I mean, if you're gonna rip off something from Star Wars, I don't think the Jawas are the thing to rip off. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why go it's bigger. the best thing to rip off. I, I would say go bigger. I mean, just, I, I mean, monks. I don't know. I don't actually. It, it I don't know if he did because this movie took so long to yeah. make. I don't know if he yeah. did because he this movie started filming he, before Star Wars came when out. When he saw it, he was like, "Ah, oh, shit!" Yeah. <laughs> like they got, yeah. When he saw it, he was like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah." Dwarves in brown robes. Yep. Crap. Yeah. Uh, no, it was just happenstance. It was in. If they the, had uh, glowing eyes, then it'd be like, "Oh shit!" I was waiting right. for it. Which, yeah. I was yeah. really waiting for it. I was kind of too. Yeah. Well, uh, he also finds in the marble uh, hallways of this is the scene that I think Phantasm is most known for. I think when you think Phantasm, I don't know. I I think you either see the tall man going, boy, Mm -hmm. or you see this scene in your mind where what happens, Michaela? It's your movie. No, no, no. The sphere. The sphere is like the most famous thing of this movie. Like it really when is. Sean was like, I don't remember this. It was like, how do you not? I remember the sphere, obviously. I just don't remember that scene. And there <laughs> so there's the most good. iconic so scene of the entire I only movie. I saw this once, and I think I slept through that part. But like, there are people that have not even seen this movie that say, "Oh, is that the movie with like the spheres flying around?" Yeah. I know. Like that's how so people I, the identify. The sphere this with movie. the razor blades on it that yeah. drills into I your head. I know the sphere, and I know the tall man. Other than that, I know nothing about Phantasm. Oh my god, nothing. None oh my- of the series. But Barely these things, this one. These Nothing. things are awesome. They fly through the they air. They're amazing. They have the razors that shoot and out of the drill, side. too. And it self-propels itself into... It sticks in your head, self-propels itself into your cranium, and then a little, uh, like, uh, a evacuation little hole opens in the back. An and auger it, comes out and <laughs> drills through your face. And it launches, sprays <laughs> your blood oh, and it's 15 so feet through the air. And it's it awesome, is. too, because the tall man hit his own henchman. He did. It, I was just you know? like, holy shit. It was, was he- like his second in command at the mausoleum. He just fucking domed with it. So yeah. It was so awesome. is the tall man controlling this thing, or is this a mind of its own? Like I said, I think it's a Pennywise situation. Okay. I think it's like he has minions, and he also like has he can kind of just like, like I mean, that's why he's able to become the Lady in Lavender, sure. you know? Too, um, I think he can control them, but I mean, like in this scene, you know, Mike dodged it real quick. Like he basically ducked right before it came up yeah, on him. Right. So Mike was the intended target. Mm-hmm. He just got away. The silver sphere of death. These things act as kind of sentinels inside of the um, mortuary itself. Of course, the sequels would go on to expand. They do it like mythology. times ten, don't they? Like there's oh yeah, there's hundreds of them. By the end. I mean, it starts off with like oh, I saw the trailer three. for Avenger. And eventually, <laughs> there's it, isn't hundreds it just of them. A giant ones shooting up yep. like cities and yeah. shit. In the f- yeah, oh yeah, yeah, in Ravager, there's like a cluster of them flying over a city oh, and just like God. melting buildings. Yeah, and we're shit. gonna have to talk about the Phantasm Legacy by the time we get to the end of this. So stick with us. We will talk about some of the sequels. Um, but uh, so he discovers that the trying to think like exactly how these realizations come about because the movie doesn't really follow a strict um this happened and then that happened kind mm. of sense there's a lot mm-hmm. of flashbacks um that kind of seem to me almost like uh don coscarelli shot this over several years whenever they could on weekends, it was okay. like he would he go. would rent the camera on a Friday because he would only pay for one day, and they were closed on the weekends. So he'd just return on Monday, so he'd get it for the whole weekend, but only go. pay That's for smart. one day. So things would change based on what was available or what he could do. He'd mm-hmm. shoot a bunch of scenes, and then in the end, it was kind of like, how do I put these together? And so through the magic of editing and additional the first cut dialogue was three hours. recording, Jesus. Well, he ended up using some of the outtakes, mm-hmm. which is why you haven't seen it. But Phantasm Four is a movie that is cobbled together. There's a lot of 
the <laughs> outtakes from Phantasm One, so you get to see like young Reggie again. You're like, what? And young Mike and young Bill <laughs> or young uh, Jody. Um, but the, the it kind of gives this. There's this really weird rhythm and flow to the movie then that this gives it because it does seem like you know. Hey, we're dropping you off at uh, what's her name, uh, Shelly, Sh- and what is Susie? Stacy Susie's Susie. uh, antique shop? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then there's like two women in the store who are kind of shopping, but the dialogue is like, uh, "Hey, Mike, we're gonna close up soon, and we gotta. If you want to sleep, you can go in the back and lay." And you're like, "What the? How yeah. did they? They did, like made this scene work?" Mm-hmm. And it came out of the blue. And so there's a lot of that. The movie just yeah. kind of feel, and I think that adds to its uh, dreamlike quality. Yes, yeah. it does. Because it always yeah. feels like it's like you're going to bed every night and having just a different version of the same dream, with slight differences, and that's what Absolutely. it feels like every time. Because they're always like, "You stay here, I'm going out there," and then Mike would leave wherever he was go- uh, mm-hmm. told to stay and go follow his brother. That happens like like three or four times in this movie now usually i would just like i would dislike a movie for doing that because you're just like oh you're being repetitive and everything it works in this movie's favor okay but why i mean do you have like a, an analysis of your own like uh, uh way yeah you because you two are basically for all intents and purposes experiencing it for the first time tonight right, right? Mm-hmm. yeah again well i mean like we said before it really does feel like a dream but this works, you're saying. I mean, but, other movies do it, and it's like, well, this is amateurish, or this is bad, or it's not right. some you know filmmaker doesn't know what they're doing. But for some reason, it works in Phantasm's favor? I think so, because it seems like we get something just a, like a little different every time we repeat the process or go over it again. Um, if nothing else... Um, it gets fucking weird because it's like a fucking yeah. there's fingers like they do cool stuff in each one like the the tall man uh, chasing him and then that little camera shift over to see his hand kind of flapping at the door and then he cuts him off and he's got yellow mustard blood sitting mm-hmm. everywhere and the fingers are on the ground just moving around and he puts it in a fucking box and the box is shaking the next morning on the stairs yeah. and his brother's just like what are you doing down here now like I love how his brother is just like okay <laughs> with everything that's going on he Perfectly is so fine. over having to be a dad to this kid he's really like is. I he cannot do this he really is <laughs> alright it's the 70s everybody's just more chill that's they're right. like yeah. yeah you're doing your thing I'm doing my thing just don't cramp my style yeah it's like we're getting uh, just like mini like mini well, stories you didn't even go the, the whole movie. way with that I mean like the, now think about like oh, what well, is the, going on well, yeah and then it turns into like it turns into like a weird a bug weird fly yeah. uh, with, with giant teeth and uh, this is the finger this in is the, the finger box. the finger and for no yeah. uh, for, for, we don't know <laughs> like, <reason. laughs> it's a, it's a pe- I, like I said you gotta apply pennywise logic yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just things that uh, are freaky was the, it, in a dream like Okay, yeah. there's a there's a severed finger, and all of a sudden it's larva that becomes you, a fly. Like, like obviously, you, you know, we're like, oh, I cut off his hand, and then it turned into something else that started chasing me. Yeah, that's exactly that's, like a yeah. dream. Yeah. Dream. That, that like, is, this is probably the the narrative chain that yeah. best describes. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I no, would say that's so. that's exactly why it works. You were saying earlier, like there's no logic, and if you get on board with this movie, that there's no logic then it works. Right. That's the thing. If you're not on board with that concept, you're not going to like this movie. Right, because you'll be going like, well, I demand like in some kind of narrative substance right. and yeah. I, like I, I, I got to be able to follow it. Else, yeah. But this one is not, but I just always, I, I wonder, you know, I mean, again, I am in the camp. I, I do like this movie, but I always kind of wonder like, you know, are, are people just being really forgiving of it? Like, was it kind of a cobbled together? Like, well, this is the best we got. And then all of a sudden the public, you know, responded to it. And he was like, oh, shit. You know, it's like, wow, people really like. But like, did he know what he was doing when he made this like, movie? Well, like I said, in his book, he said that he had like a three hour cut of the movie. And he was like, his he, he, when he cut it, he was like, there's no way an audience is going to watch a three hour version of this movie. Mm. So like, I applaud him for at least like having the self-awareness that, yeah. to know like that no one will watch this as it is and cut it down. Especially because like, this was an independent film and he did it all himself. If he wanted to make it three hours, no one was going to stop him. Right. So like, I think that like that right there shows how good of a filmmaker he is. The fact that he's like, no one will watch this. Right. And plus like, if the goal yeah. is to be like, I want to make something that makes some money as well. Like right. he knows that uh, a lean, mean 
hour and what 30 minutes yeah like Mm -hmm. he's like that's the way you gotta go having that kind of foresight at 23 years old my god i wish i was that smart at 20 right my life would be much different but he also (laughs) may have like been taken under the tutelage of like a producer somewhere who was like okay kid i'm gonna show you the ropes and here's how you're gonna so he's got a cigar (laughs) yeah slightly balding his name is probably erwin a a tie that is never all the way up uh of that i see this Mm -hmm. guy Yeah. yeah um but I mean, I guess you know whatever came next is uh, history. But um, yeah, I mean, it does. Uh, I like that 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 particular scene where you're just kind of going like, "This is you know the scene, the chain of events for the finger, and mm-hmm. we're being chased through a mortuary by a flying ball that tunnels into people's heads, and then you know we're being chased by a dude and end up hacking his hand off, turns into a finger, finger turns into an uh, alien little bug thing that's really strong." That we Apparently. put in the uh, yeah, the, really strong, yeah, the yeah. blender or you know the the garbage, the garbage disposal. disposal. Can we can we talk about the acting in that scene <laughs> when they're throwing the jacket around? Mm-hmm. That was that's priceless. Mm-hmm. That was priceless. That's acting. That <laughs> is, that's this is some of Sean's scene. favorite, like <laughs> fake, like puppet acting. We have to yeah. like, move the puppet for it yeah. itself. Yeah, like it's dragging you around. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, like that's the scene you give to actors coming into auditions. Do you ever see? Right, uh, there's a fly in your jacket, and it's really strong. And go. And I think yeah. I think Coscarelli did that again in uh, in uh, Bubba Hotep also mm-hmm. wasn't there yeah. like the Beetle Ed Wood the movie yeah. the Tim Burton movie has mm-hmm. like the uh, great behind the scenes uh, moment where uh, was Bella Lugosi has to fight the giant octopus yes, yes that's a great moment uh, that's good that, that's what I always think of when it's like somebody shadow boxing or whatever with themselves um, so there's also many allusions to the novel Dune in this movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get a bar called the Dune. What is it? Dune, Dune Oasis. Dune Cantina. Dune Cantina. Dune's Cantina. Um, and there's a scene lifted completely from the novel Dune, which hadn't been adapted into the a movie box. yet. Yeah, which is okay. So the scene also a completely out of context with the rest of the movie, but also seems to be tying into a theme. What's it's, going on? I think it. I think at first it seems out of context, but I think by the time you hit the end of the movie, it makes sense. If you know, it comes back around. Um, he goes to see, what, what was her name? Sally? Uh, maybe. Sure. Okay. Susie. Susie. Sally. Um, Sally. Jesse. She goes to see the, <laughs> the palm reader. Lives and in a creepy house and doesn't have a storefront. She's creepy. And yep. And she doesn't artist. say a word. With a candle filled room. And oh, a black box appears on the table out of nowhere. Well, she and... also wheels out her fucking like, uh, grandmother. Yep. In the black veil. <laughs> That's like black, comatose basically. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. She talks for her grandmother. Mm-hmm. Grandmother says, "This You're- is a great hustle." Yeah, <laughs> I like. I it. know, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, they a black box appears on the table. They tell him to stick his hand in it, and he's like, "It hurts! It hurts! It's it hurts really bad." And they're like, "Don't be afraid. Don't, Don't fear." fear. And fear then- is the mind killer. Oh, you can't say that because that is Dune. Yeah. yeah. Fear is the killer. Yeah. Okay, there yep. we go. We're avoiding copyright. And then uh, once he realizes that, he's able to pull his hand out and. They tell him what's all in his head. He's like, but it really hurt. And that's the lesson is don't fear. Yeah. Because the tall man is like Pennywise. He preys on fear. This is going to come back at the end of the movie, folks. Mm-hmm. This is foreshadowing. This is so this is the theme, I guess. Basically, yeah. it's trying to set up somehow that like losing your parents, uh, possibly your uh, family members feeling like you're about to be abandoned. Uh, you just Feeling don't, completely disconnected from everyone. Yeah. Just don't be afraid of it. Mm-hmm. This is the the you know then you'll be okay in life. This it is seems the, like a very the, the Star Warsy lesson, lesson too. Like yeah. that seems like a Yoda lesson, I doesn't think, it? Right? I think this is yeah. in the zeitgeist. Yeah. I think this is yeah. in the zeitgeist of the seventies. You know, mm-hmm. um, but uh, the the two protagonists. So then, basically, after they've determined, I love the way that uh, Jody, because okay, so you are kind of going on this idea. That you have a movie about a kid who is, uh, he's aware of something that's going on and the adults are not going to believe him. Right. But he shows Jody the finger in the box. Also great. And Jody. Love, and that scene. That, that was a great scene. <laughs> he just looks in the box totally casually like, okay, I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> but I love that. Like, it's I was great. not expecting that. I thought yeah. it was going to, this is going to go for a while. Because like, I'm like, nothing's going to be in there. Right, yeah. you know, but he opens it, and sure enough, the mustard finger's still the in mustard there. Finger's still there. <laughs> and then it is like, uh, yeah, okay, I believe you. We, what do we got? What do we got to do now? Right, I like that. That's just, just go with it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. all right, cool. You can't deny what you're looking at. He's just so straight faced about it. 
okay, I believe you. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow. I feel like those two actors have a very brotherly relationship with yeah. each other. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that their relationship reads as genuine on screen. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would agree. Well, yeah. This is also a thing that like, it feels like 70s movies had this more than like modern films where character relationships felt more natural and realistic mm. and the, less scripted. The sitting here at midnight, that whole scene, if this was a studio movie, would have been cut entirely. Oh, yeah. That scene yeah. would not be in Wait, what are, what are you talking about? Um, there's a scene like really early on where um, Jody is sitting on the front porch drinking a Dos Equis, like we are right now. Um, <laughs> this episode brought to you by Dos Equis. Dos Equis. We are, we are we celebrating. We haven't been sponsored by a beer in a while, have we? <laughs> <laughs> no. We shine rock all the time. Yeah. Now, tonight is a Dos Equis. I know. What am I doing? I should have had the Dos Equis. <laughs> okay, but anyway. Uh, where uh, Jody sit on the porch drinking Dos Equis playing uh, a song called Sitting Here at Midnight, which was originally written for this movie. And he's singing it and he's playing it and Reggie pulls up in his ice cream truck and hops out of the truck, grabs his guitar, sits down and starts playing because with him. We all had guitars, and yeah. then I didn't. But yeah. no, that was my dad. Everyone that was had my dad guitars at that time. in the seventies. Mm-hmm. You remember that when like kids played guitar, and like every town had a you band, had jam sessions, had, like, bands every night. Yeah. What happened? To that? Now we have karaoke bars. Nobody yeah. plays instruments. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry, old man college. No, you had you jam sessions. That's how you hung right. out. You just yeah. jammed. Yeah, look how fun it was. I saw it in this yeah. movie. Yeah, they hang out for like ten fucking minutes playing a song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. On the guy's porch. I need some musician friends. Yeah. Right? (laughs) Colin, God damn it. Why do you have a dummy but not a fucking guitar? (laughs) My God. But yeah, the scene, like, it doesn't really add anything other than to, like, add texture to their relationship. And so, like, in a studio movie, that would have been like, get this out of here. It does. And this is why I like it. The tuning for it does give us, like, Mm. a kind of stealth information that becomes extremely important later on. Was the tuning fork, you know? So he hits it and it vibrates, and with his two fingers, Reggie caps it. That's what that whole scene is there for: mm-hmm. is to introduce the tuning fork because this is going to be extremely important later on. Mm-hmm. The once they are aware that there are monsters, the three of them basically team up to go like, "Yeah, we got to go out there. We got to take down this tall dude. We got to get him, and we got to kick the shit out of him until he tells us what's going on." Oh no, they find out something else even more horrifying. Well, they got to find out what the monsters are. You should mention these monsters, and we haven't. We got to talk about the car too. The we, car and the, the monsters. Cars, monsters. <laughs> this is where we get to talk about the car. Yeah. The 1971 <laughs> Hemi Cuda. I'm going to make a bold statement and say. Probably the sexiest car in movie history. Mm. Okay, we're going up against like that's, the Wraith, the uh, yeah. Turbo. But that's that's not turbo sexy. The Wraith okay. wasn't sexy. Wraith isn't the Wraith sexy. was right. cool, but it wasn't sexy. No, no. Sense. Not sexy. The DeLorean is not, uh, that's not, not sexy. sexy. Not sexy. That's a cool car. What? I don't sexy. even know what the fuck Mad Max drives, but that's like a that's pretty an decent interceptor. Is that a Dodge Interceptor? Yeah. Well, what's the fucking Wraith one? Is that the it's Turbo a Dodge Interceptor? interceptor. <laughs> another Dodge Interceptor. <laughs> but the Wraith was like a. Like, that pl- was like a prototype it was a car. It wasn't like a real. Okay, you got Dodge the because that's the thing. I, like, definitely an interceptor. I love Vanishing Point. Vanishing Point has the Dodge. Uh, I believe that's a Challenger, right? But the Challenger has this kind of wide. The front yeah. grill mm-hmm. is this very wide. I mean, you know. Well, it's a much um, more common like car now mouth. too. Um. The uh, maybe I'm not saying that. Right? No, this is a Challenger, right? Yeah, yeah this is a Challenger, not the Charger. The Challenger, are they still around? Yeah, they still oh, make yeah. those. Okay. That's I why I'm saying like, Charger. I like the, Charger. the mystique is kind of gone of the, the, them if they still make them, you know? Yeah, they're all, they all look more yeah. modern than... Listener, tell us, what's the sexiest car in movie history? Sexiest car in movie mm. history. Yeah, God, good listener question. This is a pretty good one. Hey, this is a good I question. want you to fight me on this. Sexy. Tell me it's not the Barracuda from the this movie. Because there's cool cars. Like, Bullet Drive's a cool car, but that's not a sexy, sexy car. car. This but car is uh, sexy. Bullet cars. Cool. And it, well, we get a little beat up, but that is... What about Kit? Not, it's not sexy. sexy. It's not sexy. <laughs> it's not sexy. No. Trans Am, the fucking uh, Smokey and the Bandit. I, I was thinking about Smokey and the Bandit. That's not, it doesn't, it, sh- it should be sexy. Smoke, but the Trans not, Am is it, pretty fucking awesome. It is. <laughs> Again, very cool. Cool and sexy are not the same yeah, thing. Yeah, sexy. I would Meg, say the car they, from the Wraith I'm was sure cool, but not sexy. Yeah. out there. That was right now kind it, of you, ugly you car, win, but. Michaela, but. Yeah. All right. That's what I'm saying. Bring it. I would not. Yeah. Like, I'm, this I'm, have to yeah, I'm not about. arguing that it's not sexy. Yeah. I would have to think about a lot of cars. I'm, I'm, sh- but, I'm sure I'm yeah. missing something. So the tell me what I'm missing. Bullet yeah. but- car is a good car. Yeah. Well, it turns out this car used in the movie, I hate to break this to you, is not a Hemi Cuda. They, I looked this up. God damn it. They actually went and took, what was it? The, I don't know my fucking cars like I should, but I think uh, you see the thing says like the 440 
mm-hmm. Cuda. Yeah. When they're the, checking under the hood, you see but it. But you don't yeah. actually see in the hood because they didn't have that car. So right. they took like the model from the year before and modified it so it looked like the 71 mm-hmm. Cuda. Mm-hmm. I think the Hemi Cuda. Okay, now I may be like way off. And I know that Joe Bob Briggs, when he did his marathon of, uh, which you can watch mm-hmm. on Shudder, of all the fucking Phantasm movies, went on this tear about the fucking Hemi Cuda. But I looked it up on Wikipedia. I think the Hemi Cuda, there's only like maybe like 50 of those were ever made. Yeah, I know mm. Don said he went to high school with like a rich kid that had one. And yeah, like, I mean, and it was, he was like always just like, man, if I ever win the lottery, this number. car. That's true. And it's, uh, <laughs> I think Don Johnson mentions that on Nash Bridges because he drives. How a old fucking, are you? I'm sorry. He drives a fucking Cuda in that show all yeah. the time. But not the Hemi Cuda. Real Nash no, Bridges head. Hemi, I think he drives the Hemi Cuda. Was and the he Hemi mentions- a, is a, a eight cylinder or a six cylinder? Do you know? Because I think the Cuda uh, came about the six and the eight. The uh, cylinder, whatever the Hemi, yeah, okay. yeah. All I know is he mentions that there's only like 50 of those made. Okay, He's got one. so I'm I'm kind of on. And I watch it right, for yeah. work, Michaela. Oh, That's I'm why. like you, you <laughs> sitting over here staying up no, late at night watching no, Nash Bridges rear end. <laughs> I happen. To I was know like, it. how old are you, Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe Bob made a pretty good uh, joke because they couldn't get Phantasm two for his marathon of all the movies, mm-hmm. but he went on this whole thing about like why he wasn't doing uh, Phantasm two because apparently in Phantasm two, they blow up. An actual Hemi. No. <laughs> for the movie. That's He's like, that's painful. pornography. Yeah, that's. <laughs> that's awful. Oh, no. Yeah. That's yeah. tragic. That is that upsetting. Is horrible. Yeah. When, when I met Angus Scrim, there was a. It was a very, 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 very long line. And a number of people, at one point in time, they had actually made like a small like model of the Cuda from this movie that was Phantasm branded as like a collectible. Really? Huh? Yeah. And there was. Maybe half the people in line, so a lot of them had, had that, that model, yeah. and we're getting it signed Hot by Wheels the whole cast. Make one? Oh, no, I, I don't know. This was a big one. This was probably like a foot long. Oh, like, it was damn. a big model. Um, but and I like I was like looking it up online while I was standing in line because I was like, "Fuck, why didn't I get that?" And it was like <laughs> over a hundred dollars to buy mm-hmm. that because it was like yeah. so few of them made, yeah. and, and yeah, it so. like has all the little working mm-hmm. parts. Yeah, and all that mm-hmm. stuff. that's cool. Um, I don't know. Yeah, the Hemi Cuda. They stopped making them in 1974. Apparently, the uh, uh, war orders were kind of running low, and American Muscle kind of, uh, you know, went. Y'all uh, fucked went up, away. man. Well, it came yeah. back. I mean, eventually, it was like Chyster brought back yeah, the Charger the same, and all that stuff. Um, yeah, but then now like it's that. in 2000. It's not the same. No, it's not mm-hmm. the same. And I think I read somewhere on one of the headlines as I was scrolling past. It was like 70s Muscle outpaces modern. You know, for like if they put them head to head. Sure. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, strange things are going on in this mortuary. It turns out that the tall man is actually an alien from another planet who is smashing down all of the dead people who come through the mortuary into tiny little Jawas and then shipping them off through a uh, portal. portal in a white room mm-hmm. with basically a giant tuning fork, which is a portal to his dimension. To the planet he's His from. hot gravity stricken planet. Of, yeah. Yeah, that's why he doesn't like cold. He doesn't like cold. He doesn't like cold. That is never used against him. You thought it was going to be in the climax of this movie. You were wrong. Should have been. Do they do that? Do they do it in the sequels? I think they do. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I'm never going to watch it. How do we know he doesn't like cold? He walked past the The ice cream cream Uh, truck. I was like, (laughs) that was his. Oh, if he didn't like the cold, why would he stop and like? He was like, like linger oh, in it because he because it, it stopped him. Yeah, it was like pain. He, he, he guys like, oh. it's like yep. his kryptonite. He couldn't move. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just really like because when Mike falls into the portal, he says it's so hot, and yeah. he says, and the gravity is so strong. That's why they're dwarves. Like he he, he does an exposition it, dump real hard, real hard. <laughs> Sorry, that's my best yeah. Reggie. It all makes sense to him it all for makes some sense, reason. Man. Uh-huh. So this dude. Taking all these people, yeah. and you wonder why I was missing something the first time I watched this movie. I'm just like, <laughs> what? No, every, like every other why? every other scene in this, I was like, did I miss something? I was like, you know what? I bet I didn't. I bet I didn't. <laughs> um, this is uh, fantastic. It basically ends up. You thought you were getting a horror film. You ended up with in a science fiction movie, basically. Yeah. yeah. This is a movie about aliens trying to take over the goddamn world. Well, they're not really. No, but no, basically, no, no, no. We're f- 
He's like, just quietly. No, he just collecting. wants to collect his yeah. slight, his slaves. Honestly, his it's kind of like a multi level marketing scheme he has going on here, and he's a genius for doing it. Like the system he has set up is working pretty well for him. Seems yeah. to be. No yeah. one seems like like Michael is the only person on his case about it. Like no yeah. one else has even noticed. This yeah. is the only kid who has ever figured this out, mm-hmm. which is that also becomes like a running uh, thing in the sequels. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if he takes any murder victims. I yeah. think he takes whoever comes to yeah. the well, cemetery. All dead bodies. I wonder in case um, later on they have to exhume a body for like a case or something and they go and do it and it's not there. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and this is really thinking along the logistics of a funeral I home. I like where you're going with this though. But I, I like see the, that as a, feel coming like, to be a problem at some point maybe. I feel like he maybe doesn't take very high profile people. Like he takes maybe them all. He takes, I know this only because I've seen the sequel. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The, the idea being that the tall man basically like depletes Anybody. an entire fucking town and then moves on to the next town. Damn. And all just right. is mm-hmm. sucking, you know, dry all of these. Small I get what you're saying, though, Holly, though. It would make more sense if he only took like lower class people. Yeah, like, like people that wouldn't yeah, be so noticed. Be missed, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So, like so far we know that he took Tommy. Right. Just judging by the people no in Tommy's life, Tommy. well, I'm, and, <laughs> they and move on the, real quick. Yeah, <laughs> but there's also the most horrifying revelation that he has also taken their parents. Yeah, yeah. that was pretty fucked up. But he even said at the beginning, he's like, "Oh, you know, you'd be surprised how much you can move on in two years." I'm like, yeah. Oh, he doesn't give a shit anymore. Yeah. Okay. I think. All right. I I gotta. I got to think that that just comes from like, I'm tired of being a fucking parent to my younger yeah. brother, and like, so I just have to move on. For my own sanity, could you be, know, yeah. God, could you imagine being 20, 22, yeah. but like it was two years, so 22 right. uh, yeah. and being a parent to an 11 year old. Right. Yeah. But ironically, uh, Reggie seems to be OK with it because in the end of this movie where it starts to go like <laughs> the, the wheels are starting to fly off. We defeat the tall man by trapping him down in probably the worst built, like executed uh, mine shaft trick in the history because it looks like cardboard. Yeah. Thing on a state. But anyway, three hundred thousand dollars, Callum. We have three hundred thousand dollars. Not the wheels. Okay, he falls <laughs> into the hole and they they cover him with boulders. Yes. And then it turns out that everything that you then it, it looks like Mike wakes up. From yeah. possibly a dream. Yeah. From this, it looks like it is a continuation of the scene we saw in the first act where yeah. Mike went to bed and the tall man appeared up floating above his bed and the dwarves popped up on the side, mm-hmm. which is a kid that was the scariest thing I'd ever seen in my life. That's on like a bunch of the yeah. posters. Um, it it's- is bravos um and on their 100 scariest mm. movie moments it is number 25 whoa beating wow. out the sentinel is high the movie that it's we very watched. high well, it was only watched after the sentinel that also had yeah. on the scariest movie moment i don't that remember was what it was. Lands. i can't remember damn it okay mm-hmm. it's gone but uh it's, that, that, the, way higher, the, the way that scene is shot though like all the heavy shadows that cover the floor and stuff so you can't really it just looks like the bed is floating mm-hmm. and then all these other things pop up yeah. really well shot mm-hmm. the um the end of the movie basically is I don't see usually you expect kind of like if if a character wakes up and this is going to be we're waking up to objective reality. Right. Mm-hmm. What has happened before is the nightmare. But here's what actually happened. And in this, it's recontextualized because we get to see Reggie getting stabbed to death by a lady in Lavender who was also, as we said, a guise of the tall man, yeah. shape shifting alien from another world. Um, but in the end, Reggie is alive. But Jody who was a hero in the previous scene and helped bury the tall man at the bottom of the shaft. Jody is dead. He died, he died in a car accident. Yeah. And Mike has just awoken from a bad dream, but in actuality, his brother's dead. There is no tall man. And like, you know, we gotta, we gotta hit the road, you know, buddy. Right. And I'm okay. Taking care of you. And I, lo- being which your- I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I love the male friendships that exist in this movie. Well, I feel okay like you don't see sleep. this a lot. No, no, you don't. I, I love no. it. Yeah. It is like, they just all care about each other and they don't really care how that's perceived. Like, and I, I think that it's sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and in the end of it, uh, it turns out the tall man was actually real. Cause he appears in the bedroom mirror and goes, boy. And then, uh, the jaw was appear mm-hmm. and suck Mike into the a black abyss. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we go, what? what? What just happened? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Cut to written and directed by Don Coscarelli. So, mm-hmm. what? Do we, how do we take the end of this movie, or should we be taking the end of this movie as anything? There, so there, there is there objective reality. No. 
I think this movie can be interpreted in any way yeah, you want to interpret it. We're still dreaming at this point. If you, if that's what you if read it to be. You, I think there is no objective yeah. reality. I would agree. Yeah. It could go either way. Because you either have that everything before it was a dream, and then at the end it's, it's real and the tall man pulls him through, or the ending is a dream based on mm-hmm. everything beforehand. And, you know, he already dealt with all that shit with the tall man. Now he's having a dream about him where he gets pulled into the fucking mirror. Mm-hmm. You could go either way. It's mm-hmm. Inception. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either way. It's inception. It's it inception. doesn't matter if that if that rain, if the top yeah, stops spinning. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Well, I'll tell you as Either far way. as the What do the sequels tell us? That's what I was going to say. That's, what, tell you. that's what we need to know. The sequel picks up exactly where this one left off. Phantasm 2 and recasts Michael with James Legro, the actor oh. because Universal. Wow. Okay, Pictures, never going to watch this movie. <laughs> Universal Pictures got involved and they're like, "We're giving you some money to make the sequel to Phantasm." Oh. Like, you know, almost 10 years later, the ball is back. And uh, that was, was the that tagline. The tagline? Oh, yeah. That was the tagline. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so they reshot the opening. Oh. Uh, right? We got everybody back in front of that fireplace and all that. And then basically, oh, wow. it's Reggie and Mike go after the Tom because of the experience they had. Uh, uh, Jody is dead, and uh, the tall man got him. And so they go oh, wait, on so the, the tall trail. man got Jody. Yeah. So mm-hmm. okay. So they go car accident. Right. Tall man. Tall him. man got him. So they go on the trail of the tall man and find out that he's you know leading them across the barren waste wastelands of America. One town at a time. They're always one town too late, you know, by the time they show up. And uh, there's five total movies in the Phantasm franchise. Each one of them is unique and weird. And the budget keeps on. I mean, it goes up with two and then it starts going down. I think Universal Pictures did do Phantasm three direct to video. That was Lord of the Dead. And then Phantasm 4, I'm not even sure who did it. If it was like MGM or somebody put it out, direct the video. What was that one called? Oblivion. Oblivion. That was the one that was primarily made of footage from the... Mm -hmm. But Coscarelli directed all these. Except for Ravager. Except for the fifth one. Why didn't he do the fifth one? I don't know. It came out in 2016. It wasn't that long ago. So, so somebody had other person had control of it. And they're just like, no, you're not. Uh, I, I, I can't remember the name of the person. I just listened to their interview on shockwaves not too long ago. And I just hearing them talk about Phantasm. I was like, I'm never going to watch your movie. Well, <laughs> like, I was just you, like, I'm not happy with really anything. I don't want to see yeah. Phantasm Ravager. I mean, because it was. Well, now I, mean, I want to watch them all. Phantasm Oblivion <laughs> was. Uh, of course you do. I, well, there is a continuity. I mean, I guess that's the one thing like. You have the Child's Play movies, which up until the remake was basically, even in the modern era, they are still making Chucky films yep. in continuity. Phantasm's the probably the other series Damn. that would still make movies in continuity. Hasn't been remade as of yet. At one point, Roger Avery, who co-wrote Pulp Fiction with uh, Quentin Tarantino, nice. and also did a movie called Killing Zoe, which you should check out because it's pretty good. Uh, he was going to remake uh, Phantasm, and then that fell apart, whatever. Um, but they have been kind of in sequence, these films, uh, leading up to this really cheap, awful kind of looking um, direct-to-video Phantasm Ravager. Uh, but I suppose it's because, like, the fourth one doesn't have an They all don't really have endings. They kind of are open-ended, and then you can just kind of tack on whatever the hell you want to do. Like dreams. Yeah. But the Phantasm Ravager also has the biggest scope and the, the probably the smallest budget. <laughs> Which See, like I don't want computer generated yeah. animation. That's the thing, like I don't go to a Phantasm movie for a big scope. You know what I'm saying? Like this movie has what, like six people in it? Yeah. You know? I'm fine with that. I don't need it to be big. I think you might like Phantasm too. Okay, maybe, maybe I'll give yeah. it a chance. Maybe. You might like fans. I've gone 20 years without seeing right. any of Which them. Which surprises so. the shit out of me, to be honest with you. <laughs> Phantasm is your favorite movie, yeah. and you haven't seen any of the I, sequels. Sean's sitting over there going, like, <laughs> I don't understand you at all. I see every sequel what if I had all the way down the road. like Phantasm 2 before you got to bring Phantasm uh, to the I would, show? I would have been very confused, because I know you hadn't really seen this movie. Right. So I would have been like, <laughs> where's the nothing about I, this? Let's watch the sequel. It would have felt personal. I would have been like, <laughs> Sean, why are you that doing this? Like, that would have been like, the way you, know you are. <laughs> Screw you and your yeah. love for this movie. I want to watch a sequel. <laughs> well, now you've opened the door because I can tell you at least this: Phantasm Two is not like Phantasm One. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can at least you know say that's the thing that this franchise has going for it. So Phantasm Two is not on Joe Bob's marathon. 
No. Fuck. I, I don't, it, it may be because, and it's not on, I think there were like several, because didn't, um, well ago USA somehow got the rights to all the movies for the Blu-ray releases here in the States. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they have Phantasm 2, because Phantasm 2 is still a universal picture. Mm-hmm. Okay. But somehow all the rights to the other mm-hmm. ones have all come to well go USA. So you, yeah, Phantasm 2 is the outlier. It's kind of like the, the Chucky movies. I think you can get like two through yes. uh, whatever because they were all ones. universal. Yeah. But the first one is an MGM movie. And so it's usually not on the same set. They did. There is a, now a set for the Chucky movies and has them all okay. on there. They came to an agreement at some point for that. Just like the Halloween movies all mm-hmm. somehow magically came together for an entire set. For mm-hmm. a box set that's now obsolete because <sighs> it's missing. Yeah. Uh, an upcoming I don't three total I don't movies. Think I don't it's think missing we're missing a, anything. Another trilogy. Truth, yeah. I don't think we're missing anything at all. <laughs> oh, you can do that? Just go like, oh, welcome oh, to Oh, so my now world. you can just totally That's skip the about movies? It. I okay. still have those movies. Yeah. Yeah. And the other ones you can just yeah. ignore. This oh. is where I live with the Terminators. It was like, oh, there's only boy. two of those. There's a discussion. Yeah. Have we mm-hmm. talked at all about J.J. Abrams and his oh. involvement with this movie? We have not. Well, tell us. Um, He's a gigantic fan of this movie. And um, he wanted to do a like an anniversary screening of the movie so he asked Don Coscarelli he's like do you have like a print I could use and Don's like I don't have anything good enough to show for a screening and you know I'd really like to get it remastered but I just don't have like the the manpower or the money to do it and J.J. Abrams was like well I'll, I'll lend, lend you my studio right, he's Bad like, Robot J. J. can do it and so Bad Robot did the restoration the 4K restoration of this movie and then they did a screening of it J.J. Abrams uh, created a Captain Phasma based on Phantasm that's why she has a chrome outfit and why her name is Phasma because he nice. loves this movie so right. I have a lot of respect for JJ because of that. Because <laughs> <laughs> he is a phantasm yeah. Yeah. super fan. So much he's like, let me restore it for you, Don. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, the new one looks nice. I mean, basically the only thing that I can really see, I mean, aside from cleaning up the print, they did uh, like remove, well, you wouldn't even notice, but it's the shots of the sphere. They took camera guys out of the reflections and stuff yeah. like that and, uh-huh. and took out wires that you could clearly see and yep. that kind of okay. stuff. It was like, oh. oh it looks a lot looks cleaner nice. now, yeah. <laughs> this is the best version. And they restored the Avco Embassy logo. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now it actually mm-hmm. feels like a real movie. So thanks, JJ. Yeah. <laughs> You're a real American hero, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, hey, he yeah. wasn't like there was no reason for him to do that. It was not going to no, benefit yeah. him at all yeah. to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I like this yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had nothing to gain from that. And Captain Phasma, of course, is a in a um, you know shiny silver mm-hmm. stormtrooper suit. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got a lot of mail about this one. I, I wish she'd flown around and stabbed. I was gonna say why. I was gonna say <laughs> why, why doesn't she, she have like that? things pop out of her forearms that like stab she, people right, or something? Right? She does get right? a spear uh, in the second one. Why doesn't one, she have a purpose at all? A purpose yeah. would be great. I, I know. Mean, I want to like that character. At least a lot this more. sphere yeah. through the th- flew through the more. air and did something. Like, yeah. kind of like had the an ending Darth goal. Maul of this series. Were you guys you expecting? Really like them, were you guys expecting the spear just to get thrown in the trash compactor? Because that's all that happens to Phasma in those movies. <laughs> We're like, oh, it's going to show up and then just go in yeah, the trash compactor. Yeah, swing the just grab it and just throw it away. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, listener. We're going to summon our mailman so we can read some of your mail. And so to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, well, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Thanks Igor. Igor. He's got a nice shiny chrome suit on today. Oh, uh, and he's got a little orb flying around yeah. too. Oh, where'd, where'd that come oh, from? Oh, that's a snitch. Never mind. It's, oh. it's mm-hmm. different. Wr- that's wrong franchise. Wrong Get yeah, the fuck out of here. It, that's not going to hurt anybody, I don't think. Take it back, Igor. Well, uh, this week also, uh, we lost a genre superhero this week. Uh, this was uh, Sid Haig. Sid Haig uh, was a star. Well, you probably know him from movies like Rob Zombie's, everything Rob Zombie has done, right? I was going to mm-hmm. say, are you going to yeah. just list them all? Or? Was, well, he's I mean, in, he had a, he had a career that spanned almost six decades, so yeah. I mean, he's been in everything. You might know him from Rob Zombie. You might yeah. know him from that episode of MacGyver that he was in. Or George Spider Lucas, Baby. Uh, right. THX 1138. Yeah. Or possibly mm-hmm. the Pam Greer. Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was, uh, yeah, Coffee and, uh, mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, Foxy Brown. Yes. Yep. He'll pop up. He's in also things in Jackie Brown. Like, too. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. He ran for president. Mm-hmm. He's a trained, uh, hypnotist. Mm-hmm. Sid Haig. Uh, may we raise a glass in his honor. Here, here. Uh, Bravo, sir. It still doesn't make me want to actually see three from hell. No. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, no. And it wouldn't because he's barely in it, apparently. It's a shame that that's his yeah. last credit. Unfortunately. 
uh, just like Phantasm Ravager, unfortunately, is uh, Angus, Angus Scrim Scrim's uh, final film. Yeah, as long role. as he had fun. Um, so, uh, G Money has written in. What and he says, uh, Freak Show Dog Oscar. After oh okay so Wait, so we said basically like, like uh, are we giving out send a dog Oscar yeah. or do we dog have a dog named Oscar and G Money a uh, uh, longtime oh. listener has sent a picture Aww. of the dog that he was <gasps> grooming Poppers! that is a very freshly groomed dog it yes. looks very nice you know why he's a freshly groomed dog because he's a dog groomer you are correct I mean you, you're doing a good job sir that yeah, dog looks, looks good. fresh Poppers um, fresh cut right there. Then we also have a review, because if you write a review on uh, iTunes, we'll read it. GC Maya says, I've tried other movie podcasts, and I often get bogged down with movie making minutia or spiral off into the weeds, spending minutes at a time on in-jokes or totally unrelated topics. Saturday Night Freak Show stays on task, and the pleasantly engaging hosts actually discuss the movies, throwing out just the right amount of relevant extra information. I really like the current lineup. The current hosts are a nice mix of movie buffs. You could sit and enjoy a movie with nice job guys oh thanks wow. that was really sweet that's so awesome all right which one of you wrote this that was a really good review yeah that's really it was nice. almost too nice in my, like, in so my nice. continuing journey of not being able to accept I was love like, I'm, I'm, suspicious of I'm back here uh thank you very much for writing those very nice you words. know what i accept we appreciate it. it i believe you. i will try and, and I thank it. you <laughs> I thank you very much <laughs> wow you've really you've You've really moved on in your you life, Sean, Holly. You're doing therapy very well. once a week. All right, there you yes, go. Sean, you and I we're we're just gonna take from this. Uh, keep the tangents to a minimum. That's what I'm hearing from that, right? I mean, they, uh, <laughs> so, are, are, and I think, but I think they said if we do go on tangents, they're they're so good. So we're are at the right amount of tangents so. right yes. now. So we can't go more. We hit that sweet yeah. spot. Yes. yes. All right, we're it's doing not, well. Don't blow it, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is this is in itself a tangent. Yeah. If we keep I know talking because about this. A lot of mail. Sorry. Sorry. We got to plow through this. Okay. Uh, we so are going to review. Heavy mailbag. We're going to review Phantasm after this. But first of all, Jacob Cotner writes in and say, Phantasm is a mind fuck. I've seen it multiple times and I still can't tell you what it's about. It's like a dream yeah. you keep on having. You're yeah. familiar with it. But when you're having it, when it leaves your head by the time you brush your teeth. The whole series nails the vibe pretty well. Anyway, recommended. Perfect. Thanks, that, man. That's our wrap up. That's man. a yeah, that was a great, great <laughs> way to summarize it. <laughs> we have really smart fans that write really eloquent things. We really do. Well, we Novato really do. Judoka writes in and says, Horror being my weakest genre growing up, I never had seen this until last year. I thought it was okay for the first time I saw it, and it really grew on me over time, and I love it now. The tall man is a team to me. Thank you all for being <laughs> part of my setting the mood for Halloween month and let the Halloween picks begin. Yes. Thank you, Johnny New Jersey. Tall Thank man you, deserves sir. more credit. Tall man's iconic. There you go. Mm. Well, yeah. mm. He is in this house. Uh, Steve <laughs> Coates says Phantasm is imaginative, bizarre, and truly entertaining to the ball. Mm. Laugh out loud. Yeah. Uh, I love the ball puns. Yeah. supposed Bring to say it. that or just LOL? Ball and puns. Say, okay. uh, Dave Forbes writes in and says Phantasm 2 is the best one. Reggie is the poor man's ash and spends five movies just trying to get laid. Uh, I, that's true. I've been working my way through your back catalog. It's fan fucking tastic. Although I do have a request, if I may, Killer Tongue. It's pure freak show material. Uh, I put it on my list. After yeah, watching I, looked, the trailer. I looked up. I looked up the cast <laughs> like, list and was like, shit. "Oh shit!" Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that's that's on the list. <laughs> Great there, my friend. Thank you for that recommendation. Yeah. Right. And we usually bizarre we, shit. We usually do a listener request month in January, so True. stay tuned yes. for that. So uh, we, I mean. I mean, for us, it can go really well or horribly wrong, but that's up to you guys. So, yeah. Because we let you vote. So get ready for that. I love listener so, month. I'm going to fix the box for the killer tongue this year. <laughs> well, Simon Carter writes in and says, I love the original three phantasms, pretty much in descending order, but it's one of those situations where the second entry is a strong contender for the top spot. But number one is my favorite. Story is genuinely creepy and lays the foundation for a cool universe. Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Uh, Jim Otto says Phantasm is a top 10 horror movie in my mind. I mostly enjoyed the sequels because I really like the characters. Plus, they had the baddest car in horror movie history. It's, it's a, a great car. car. It's a dope car. It's a great it's car. A sexy car. Michael Whitaker says, I think that what I like the most about this franchise is it's created its own mythology and it's stuck to it. There doesn't seem to be a lot of people trying to imitate this and it's always stayed a very unique movie series. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it. There you it's go. got its own thing going on, whether that's, that's for better or worse. But... You can't really <laughs> rip off Phantasm. Yeah. Maybe scenes, but you can't rip off the whole thing. Uh, Andrew Bradford says uh, Phantasm was my favorite 
one of my favorite horror movies in the top 10. In comparison to the four sequels, this is far and above the best. Two and three are action horror and five, good grief. I have no idea what the hell was going on in part five. That's Ravager. Nearly a 20-year wait after part four, and the fans discovered a big pile of shit. It's nonsensical, and Angus Scrim's last role was just sad. He deserved better. Not not selling me on the sequels here. Well, and everybody's recommending Phantasm. Two. Two. Everyone's yeah. saying two, yeah. Uh, about last week's movie, The House on Haunted Hill, we are yeah. remiss. MF Mad, the Keeper of the Wall, says we inducted Famke Jansen ah. onto the Wall of Fame because she was in Celebrity, which we also did on the show, The Faculty, right. which we did on the show, and The House on Haunted Hill. Awesome. Congratulations. Hey, very nice. Congratulations. That's for right. We the wall. Should, we're awesome. sending our, your trophy uh, it is this in week. The mail. Yes. Do we have a ceremony like that when they dedicate the stars? And the I think fame? we should. We should right, call so, uh, up. We'll let her know to come over yeah. so we can present her. With no her one has actually shown wall. up for the ceremony, but that's their loss, Colin. Uh, I my, think Igor's responsible for that. Yeah, yeah. we right. Yeah, Igor he's, sent, yeah. he's got the list to yeah, invite he people. Sent, he sends out the invites. He doesn't actually send them. Uh-huh. Yeah. He just shoves them in the couch. He's, he's just like, oh, <laughs> we're going to have to fire somebody. Is that why the couch is so lumpy? Yeah, he just shoves the invites. God damn it. Yeah. Um, my unfab life says, uh, house of haunted hill is sketchy. Okay. It's got really terrible CGI aside. It's a guilty pleasure just to watch Jeffrey Rush and Famke Jansen chew scenery. Yeah, absolutely. You Artemis. Know. Uh, sorry. No, no, no go ahead. Keep going. Scenery chewing and I like uh, Jeffrey Rush. Yeah. Just, well, Artemis Jeffrey. Grove says it's Vincent Price or get the fuck out. Fair <laughs> enough. Okay. All right. About the previous week's episode, Jason takes Manhattan Carson Snar writes in and says, I like this movie, even if most of it occurs on a ship, but I imagine what it could have been like crazy. No. Okay. I should say that again. Instead of yeah, doing why, Shatner. Why'd you read it that yeah. way? But yeah, I you're imagine, really shattering it. Yeah. I imagine what it could have been like. Give me the like. goddamn nails. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a hammer. Nails. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Living be- in the city and it's no big deal. Yep. <laughs> B Movie Poster Vault writes in and says, Years ago, I watched all the Friday the 13th movies in sequence over a week or two. I was hoping that Jason offing New Yorkers would be a fun time. Instead, I was bored stiff as he killed uninteresting folks on a boat and then toured the sewers. It's massively frustrating flick and easily my least favorite in the series. The franchise was only redeemed by the ridiculous Jason X Cyber Jason goes nuts in space. It should just be called Tours of the Sewers. That's a way better title for that movie. Tours, 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 tours of the Friday Sewers. Friday 13th Party. Tours of the Sewers. Jason well, Tours of the Sewers. That's what he does now. Yeah. He's like, it's like Maps of the Stars. Yeah. yeah. Tours yeah. of the, the, the Sewers, sewers. sounds like I mean, a, it sounds like it'd be a double feature with Street Trash. Yes. <laughs> oh, it really does. Doesn't I mean, it? even the remake was like, he has tunnels underground. So like, yeah. that's like, that's something they where stick started. with. Yeah. Tunnel or yeah. Jason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Jason Tunneler. Uh, Travis Legler writes in and says the main reason I can still watch this movie is because of how serious and with how much love for Jason Kane Hodderhead. If you're if you've never seen the documentary about him, please do. It's very good. Oh, I yeah. personally love part seven just for Jason. The story has issues, but watching Kane makes up for that. What's the documentary called? Uh Hell, to Helen Back. To Helen Back, yeah. There you go. Check he it out. Very good Jason. Yeah. I like watching yeah, he's, Jason. Yeah. yeah. He might be the best. I think he might be the best reason. Well, yeah, he's the best yeah. reason. I, I think that's yeah. in didn't we say that on the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we did. We did. did. Part, uh, two. Part two. That was a good Jason, too. Is that Ted White? No, Uh, Ted White was four. It was four? Okay. Two was... uh, I like two. I like two Jason. Oh, my God. I can't. Warrington... Warrington Steel. Warrington Gillette. Oh, uh, I mean, that's a name. That sounds like... (laughs) That's an actual name. I'm going to go with that. Sure. Yes, Colin. That's correct. MF Mad writes in and says, have you guys... Speaking of Kane Hodder, have you guys watched the Hatchet movies? Kane Hodder is a beast as Victor Crowley. Very underrated series, in my opinion. I have not watched. I've them. never Are actually seen good? a one of them. No, yeah. one. never seen it. Not All right, I saw two of them. First one was like, meh. Second one was pretty bad, and didn't go to the third one. That's there's four. That's four. And the fourth Victor one Crowley. is called Victor Crowley. Yeah. But uh, that's because of the age probably that they hit me at. It was like, uh. Uh, Josh Zemer writes in and says, "Me and pickles." Have been. Is this, the this dog? is another. Yeah, we're. Is this the, the wait? Is this the dog that like knows to go for a walk, or is that a different dog? This is a legit I'm sorry, Saturday I can't remember Free Show dogs. fan. Uh, me and Pickles have been enjoying oh, catching adorable. up on your recent episodes 
We watched Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. <gasps> Ooh, with posters and Jason's list. Yes. Uh, for, for, yeah, yeah for, the, Jason for the doll. listeners, P- P- Pickles is cuddling with the NES Jason doll. It has and, an uh, actual I, Jason New York poster. Yeah, an I Heart That's New York Jason nice. Pickles. Poster. And That's Pickles looks into sir. it. Love it. Okay, so here we go. He says, uh, uh, we watched Part 5, A New Beginning, which I say- shamelessly enjoy. For the fact that Colin made that it's very much an actual Friday the 13th type of movie yep. and because it's bananas. Jason takes Manhattan did produce the best gifts for us all. And yeah. this movie yeah, caused us to have the crazy fun Arsenio Hall late night talk show appearance of Jason, which was full cane hotter and full makeup. Which is great. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. Which we posted on our Facebook page, which you can check out. Please I'll tell you how that. after yeah. this. Uh, P.S. Sean's ranking methods nearly made me go cross-eyed. Yeah, um, all of us. For we real. were. There's a reason we were yelling. For at real. I, yeah, you I, should I, go back and I listen to that episode because we're like, what the fuck, well, Sean? Nuts. What are you doing? I don't know what was going on there. It was nuts. Yeah, I mean, numbers. Was, numbers was, are hard for you because I was mind. not prepared. This was a, It was a spur of the moment thing. I was not prepared. Holly wasn't prepared either. Okay, I'm not, I'm not good. Yeah. Maybe she's better when she's not I wasn't prepared. prepared. I am not. I don't yeah. think any of us were. I was the only one that had a letterbox list. I'm just saying I'm the worst out of the four of us. Chris, yes. <laughs> Chris Eklund writes in and says, hello, Freak Show. Hi. Welcome. He Hola. says, I'm finishing up the Friday the 13th part eight. It's a great episode. Jason is my favorite of the big three. I have had a lip tattoo for seven years and somehow it's holding strong. Yeah. Yeah. We I'm saw surprised. That. We, we saw that good, lip tattoo. So. Yeah. It looks it, pretty good. It's a grunt. I grunt. Think, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. I remember that picture. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I went and got one in high school and it didn't last very long. No. no. Oh, do they go away? The yeah. Lenses? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. like the inside of your mouth like regenerates on like a three week basis. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. why like when you like get a canker sore, or you like bite your lip or whatever, it heals really right. quickly. It's like the fastest regenerating part of your body. Mm-hmm. So. How did that feel getting a tattoo on your lip? It's fine. So what was different it? Different than any other. I don't. It was like a stupid nickname I had in high school. Uh, we all like went and You got should ours. say it out loud on I mic recorded for uh, history. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I feel like most people didn't even know I had it. That was the whole oh. point of it because it was you have a tattoo and no one else would know you would mm-hmm. have it unless you showed it to them. So. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> uh, you, want, you guys all want to go get lip tattoos? Like, go get no, freak can show? we get a Saturday night freak, get show, freak show? Yeah, no. can we get all get freak oh, show lip we tattoos? We get one word on. Saturday night freak <laughs> show. <laughs> it's what though? Wow. It's for another episode. So, <laughs> Sean, you get freak. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, Mike Welch says we were talking show. about uh, there's uh, Friday the 13th fan uh, uh, movies, shorts. Oh, yeah. And one of them has uh, Tom Matthews in it. And it Mike does. Welch says the one that has Tommy in it is called Never Hike Alone, and it oh, stinks. Yeah. I don't mm. like, I've seen a couple of mm-hmm. these Friday the 13th fan films. I don't like them. Yeah, they don't work. They're not. They don't work. They're not. They're not doing good. it. Right. They're not doing it. There was a recent one that came out. And it's, you There's one it on play, with like uh, it's not good. Bigfoot in it that actually. What? Yeah, it wasn't a Friday the Thirteenth movie, but uh, it was a summer camp movie. And instead of Jason, it was Bigfoot, but it actually kind of worked. That sounds like, cool. It was called yeah. Eagle Walk. There you go. I remembered yeah. it. It's like a thirty minute movie. That That's sounds weird. like it could work though. As, it wasn't in. too bad. <laughs> For yeah. as much as people um, who don't enjoy these things will put down. Uh, a series like Friday the 13th has just like kind of mindless dude walking around killing people. You watch people doing exactly that and making fan films about a dude just walking around killing people mm-hmm. and try and make it a Jason movie. And you realize how much goes into actually making these things right. good and successful. Mm-hmm. Um, and that there's a lot of effort that go into yeah, it. There's, people a lot, just make shit. there's a lot more substance than what people give it credit for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot more. So well, I'd like you all to stop. Stop with your, your hate. Yeah, well, just yeah. stop. The people who made the movies actually do know at least the basics of filmmaking. Right. Also, I want a good Bigfoot movie. Yeah. Why don't we have a good Bigfoot movie? I want a good Bigfoot movie. Bigfoot There's not a good Abominable. No? I want it. I haven't uh, seen that. We got Abominable good, Snowman. We got that one scene in the signs. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, anyway. Don't look at me like that, Holly. <laughs> I, need, I need a whole movie, though. I do, too. Yeah, a whole movie. Boggy oh, Creek movie. doesn't count. There's no Bigfoot in that until right. yeah. the end of the movie. Well, Sean Stiff writes in says, uh, "No Kane hotter as Jason and Freddy versus Jason was like another, like another other than Bruce Campbell playing Ashley Williams in Ash versus Reggie Bannister." What he's saying, like he's saying that the equivalent, like not having Kane hotter play Jason is would be like not having. Um, Bruce Campbell. Bruce, Bruce Campbell, Campbell play Ash. Ash oh, yeah. in Ash versus Reggie yeah. Bannister. Yeah, yeah. Assuming he had Reggie yeah. Bannister. Yeah. It says neat, but ultimately unfulfilling. Andrew John writes in and says, uh, 
that our Jason goes to hell or Jason goes, Jason takes Manhattan was another great episode as usual. Made my yard work bearable. Thank yeah. you, sir. Okay. Uh, you're talking about how Kane Hodder at conventions choking people made me reflect on when I met him years ago and he recently had throat surgery. Oh, no. I recently had throat surgery. <laughs> and he's still- he does not let up on the choking and me, and me being a big guy like him. I think he gave it his all and that had me messed up for hours afterwards. <laughs> I got yeah, choked. he doesn't so you have, have, a, you have a t-shirt now that says I got choked by Kane Otter. Kane Otter. He yeah, should be selling those if he isn't yeah. already. Yeah. yeah. I will say I survived the, meeting Kane Otter. Yeah. I will say the ultimate compliment is when people say that they that we make their chores bearable. There yeah. You go. That's very That's true. Y- yard work especially. Yeah. Yard, yard work sucks ass. Sucks. And we're we are I just want to put this out there. We are the perfect uh raking leaves during the fall uh, <laughs> in your yard podcast. Especially now that we're getting we, into we the Halloween the, right. movies. I think we are the fastest growing uh raking leaves in fall. I think so. Oh, that I, I know for sure. Yeah, that's that, right. claim. that you know yeah, that I, I feel agree. really confident about. <laughs> yes. Uh, also sh- folding your socks. And <laughs> Sean Roger writes in last of the mailbag says when I was a youngster I was only able to rent the new Blood and Jason takes Vancouver as they were both rated M fifteen plus which in Australia means recommended for mature audience. I hated them both, but thank <laughs> God there was at one point an unscrupulous Gen Xer who worked at a video store and clearly hated his job and didn't give a shit about what he rented out or to whom and allowed me to watch the R-rated Friday the 13th flicks. I salute you, long-haired, stone, unwashed video store guy. That's Colin, so did you funny. work in Canada at one yeah. point? Yeah. yeah. Australia. That's all, Australia. That's Australia. all video store employees right. of that era. Can you mention the hair Everyone. flips? I know like, when I worked at the movie theater, I didn't give a fuck. I was like, because my whole thing was like the MPA. I was like, that's not a law. Yeah. I don't have to enforce it. No. It's not Kevin, a law. Kevin Smith made a movie about us, and it was called Clerks, and that yeah. was about like an entire fucking absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but it's great that the the people who are the gatekeepers are just like, come on in. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. there you yeah. go. God bless. That's yeah. how we all back got when our- it was fun. Yeah, and nobody cared, and it was awesome. And right. the world was a little bit dangerous. Um, so I'll tell you what, listener, we do is. want you to join. The Freak Show family, and to do that, you have to follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You got to follow us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can also join in on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show for the time of your life. And now we're going to go around the table and review Phantasm. Colin! Yes, Sean. Uh, Colin, what did you think about tonight's movie, Phantasm? Phantasm was a goddamn classic, Sean. I'm surprised that you would even ask and not know the answer. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> right off the bat. It's my job. Um, it's, it's, it's Phantasm's uniqueness, I think. Uh, you really you have not seen anything else like it. I mean, it kind of trades in the, like we were saying, maybe Dario Argento or David Lynch mm-hmm. operate in this mm-hmm. Yeah. area of uh, filmmaking where uh, although this seems more solid than like uh, David Lynch's stuff yes. uh, you know so maybe it is Dario Argento uh, you know and I'm not saying style I don't know it's a it's an almost intangible thing they capture nightmares with yeah. uh, certain films of theirs and this one specifically um, does feel like an ever evolving dream which we said but um, I mean I think uh, I think yeah, I was young enough to when I first saw it, even though I did not really appreciate it, because I think I'd seen like a green kind of. They used to show movies on like the independent channels here in town off of uh, film, and it was green. I just remember, <laughs> you know, and dark, and you couldn't really see what was going on. They cut everything out when the ball hit the guy's head. That was pretty much where it cut, and then he's lying on the floor. I'm like, what did he, happened? Did he pee himself on the TV version? Yeah, that was still, the, the pee was still coming out, but you're like, what? You know, they cut out all the drilling and the blood spraying mm. and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, the commercials and all that, you kind of lose, like, what the thread is. And this movie is not that kind of movie that you can watch that way. Um, I've grown to love it over the years. And like I said, uh, it ends up, I don't know if I necessarily even by choice, but I end up seeing Phantasm a lot. And, uh, it's just, um, it's part of my collective, you know, it's one of those things at this point, it has made itself like one of the, the pillars of my horror movie. Um, you know, uh, backbone, backbone, is that a good one? pillar of your backbone, the pillar of the backbone. <laughs> Got it. I'm with you. I have a pillar. The pillar of your horror coliseum. Pillar, hold up. They have chiropractors for that, Colin. If you got pillars. Yeah. What does the pillar hold up? Help me out with my structures. Structures, buildings. It's a foundation. Yeah. Just not a. I think the backbone. The backbone is the problem thing you're having a problem with. 
Okay. It yeah, shouldn't get, be a backbone. Get the backbone out of there. Yeah, That's the, the problem. Yeah, take the backbone out. Everything else is fine. Yeah, I mean, I can't uh, recommend it enough. Uh, with the caveats, if you haven't seen it, yeah, obviously, I don't think you've gone this far in our podcast. You've been like, what the fuck? Um, but I think, you know, yeah, I think it's one of those, like, uh, this movie, you expose to people by just ripping the Band-Aid off. You just go, you know, you're in the deep end. <laughs> right, Holly? <with> Phantasm. <laughs> well, we're going to find yep. out. I'm curious to see what she says. Um but I think that's the only way to expose somebody to it. And even if Holly doesn't like it tonight, she may end up thinking about it later on and coming around to it later. I mean, that's the thing about this movie. I don't know if a lot of people like it necessarily the first time they see it. Uh, I think it just kind of grow- it lingers in your subconscious. And then you know, later you're like, man, I should go back and watch that again. Um, but yeah, there's Phantasm. I got to get off the air. Holly, what'd you think? Um, you know what, Colin? You're... You're absolutely right. I I didn't like it. I loved it. <laughs> I'm surprised. I, yeah. I I'm not gonna lie. I went into this being like she's not gonna like it. And Michaela, that's okay if she doesn't like it. Like I had that, I had that discussion with Can myself. You your own therapist yeah. there for a minute. Oh, yeah, because I was like, Michaela, it's okay to not like a movie, and right. it's okay. You know, it's not totally fine. The same taste. It, it's not. Fun. It's not a statement on your friendship if she doesn't right. like this she's movie. Still friends. She's yeah, not yeah, gonna yeah, hate exactly. you for this. Yes. This isn't Cannibal Holocaust or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, fuck that movie. I hate that movie. <laughs> I don't fault anyone for hating that movie. Um, I, I think here's here's the thing. The only thing I knew about this movie is that it was batshit crazy. That is the only thing I knew about it going into it. And with that in mind, I went into it with an open mind. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this for what it is. I'm not going to put any pretense on it. I'm not going to put any any expectations on it. And I'm not going to... I'm not, I'm not going to be against whatever this movie is. So with that, like I, like we said earlier, you have to be okay with there not being logic. You have to be okay with there not being a structure. There's going to be holes. You have to be okay with these things. With that, it's a lot of fucking fun. It's crazy. Like there's a great horror element. There's that's one of the greatest like horror scenes I've seen in a really long time. It was ridiculous. It was wonderful. Which one? When the fucking little ball drills I knew, in his I was head. Like, I was like, if she isn't on board with this, yeah. like, this is the tipping point. Like, if she likes this scene, she'll probably like the movie. If she doesn't, that, yeah. I was like, that was no it. As soon as that, over. as soon as that little ball drilled into his head and shot his blood and brain matter into a stream in front of it, I was like, this is amazing. I, I've never, I've never seen anything like this. This whole, the whole movie just kept doing things I have never seen before. It was a great horror it was a great sci-fi which i was not expect well i was kind of expecting when we got that little snippet at the beginning that when yeah, he said was, he was an alien it was i was like oh okay. god yeah we should we should clarify so <laughs> the 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 remaster we have like immediately starts with like Angus Scrim talking directly to the camera, Hello. and we were. Oh, de- I didn't see you. <laughs> I'm Angus Scrim, <laughs> <laughs> and we were debating He's of the book and shit. Yeah, and we were debating of if you, if we should watch it, if we should skip it. And while I'm waffling on it, like he starts to talk like major spoilers for the movie. I'm like, Colin, skip it. Like- <laughs> <laughs> He's like, look, I'm an alien, mm-hmm. and I'm here to talk about phantasm. <laughs> That's spot on. It's <laughs> a great impression. <laughs> so obviously I knew it was going to be a little bit, but I still uh, watching the whole thing. I did not know what was happening. I didn't know where they were going with it. And sometimes I feel like that can be really fun. Obviously that can be really annoying during some movies, but with this one, it works. We, you know, we talked about the dream sequence or not sequence, but the dream structure of the movie. It just works for some reason. It's very unsettling and it's very weird but it, it's fun and it works and i'm gonna go ahead and say that i don't want to ever watch the sequels i want to just go with the inception ending on this and i want i don't want to think that there's you i don't want that top yeah, spin i want i want the top to spin i don't want to think that they go on the road trip and it picks up no no oh shit that I don't, reminds me i don't want to know that i forgot i said that they recast mike with james legro in the second yeah. one yeah but in the third and fourth one, they get like the whole band back together. Oh, really? I mean, like, yeah, Bill oh Thornberry's <laughs> back, and Mike uh, he takes over again could for you, three, four. Could you stop talking? Because yeah. now I want to watch all the fans. God damn it, Sean's gonna bring them all <laughs> now. Uh, I want okay. nothing to do with it. I want the Inception. I, I'm ending. gonna have to go marathon. Once he doesn't uh, have, Bob. once he doesn't have, uh, you know, Universal looking over his shoulder, Coscarelli's like, well, fuck, I'm getting everybody back together. Sure. The way it should have been. Sure. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, also another sexy car is Eleanor from Gone in 60 Seconds. That's what I was going to say. That's God a fucking it. sexy car. That's, that's what I was going to say. That is a fucking sexy car. I think that's fair. Yeah. Yes. That's what yeah. came into my yeah. head. We were like, I agree. We were like halfway through a mailbag Eleanor. and I'm like, Eleanor. Yes. <laughs> You're like, I've got it. I've got it. I'm kind of like, what movies had like yeah. Shelby's and shit? And yeah. Like, mm, yes. Fucking Eleanor. Yes. Good choice. Yeah. It's a good one. Thank you. Um, yeah. Sorry. Phantasm was amazing. <laughs> I definitely recommend it. Awesome. I loved it. It's probably going to be in my favorites from now on. Sean. Uh, I mean, this movie is uh, its kind of amazing. Um, I didn't know that they had started shooting this so far. Like how long it took them to shoot this movie. I had no idea. Um, and I will say that because of that process, um, it feels like for this movie, um, everything kind of came together. Like the, the process they had to go through, the story they were trying to tell, um, it all adds to the dreamlike nature, the nightmare-like nature of this movie, and I, it, it only helps it. Um, I'm I'm glad I watched this for a second time. Um, after that first viewing at the uh, drive-in, you, I don't think you could have got me to just watch this on my own and be like, eh, I don't know, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> That's fair. Like really we said, was, not ideal situation. No, not an ideal situation. Well, it, it was like the third movie. It was out of four. And right? again, I'm not saying I'm. I'm pretty sure I was like nodding off at that point. Um, but watching it tonight, like I like it was surprisingly more clear and uh, uh, narratively, like I, I got it. I understood it. I it, it made a lot more sense. Even there's some things that like you know obviously don't make sense, but it made more sense. Um, I also enjoyed it a lot more. Like the little moments with the finger, I had. I think I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten a lot about this movie. Um, you forgot for, the sphere. No, uh, we also yeah. forgot about the comedy. Right, I mean, this movie does have. It's funny. It does have some good beats. It does. Yeah. yeah, it does. Again, that hand flapping at the door and everything. It's just well, like, even though, like, oh, I believe you now. Like, yeah. that's a funny <laughs> moment. Right, right. My foot. You know, yeah. stuff, stuff yeah. like that. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I liked it a lot more watching it tonight. Um, this is a really good movie. Also, that score. Like, I yeah, really like good. the score of this movie. Again, it all it's Fred Myrow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It all goes to that just like it, it's a dream. It's like I've had these dreams before and it all really comes together completely. Um, I really liked watching it tonight. It's it's I like Phantasm. I would definitely recommend it. Um, I'm, I'm going to at some point venture, I think, into the waters of the sequels. I think I'm going to do it. But uh, that's your that's your job that's, here, Sean. Yeah, like, I guess that's, it is. Um, you're the only one who's going to do that. Uh, but forgetting all that, um, Phantasm actually really good. Uh, mm-hmm. So I recommend Phantasm. Mm-hmm. Michaela. I mean, I could talk another three hours about how deep I love this movie and like my history with this movie. Um, But yeah, I've been to the 35th anniversary where I met Michael Baldwin, Bill Thornberry, Kathy Lester, Don Coscarelli, and Angus Scrimm. So all your main cast. Uh, Reggie Bannister as well. Um, They had a panel that was great. They talked about uh, anything you could ever want to know about this movie. We got to see Bill Thornberry perform sitting here at midnight. It was like oh, everything you could ever want for a phantasm experience. It was perfect. Um, it was especially great because two years later, Angus Grimm would pass away. And that was part of my like, like I stood in line for six hours to meet Angus Grimm. And I was Damn. like, I'm never getting out of this line because like he will die. Cause like mm-hmm. he was old when this movie was made, you right. know? And, um, and then in 2016, um, uh, Angus Grimm unfortunately passed away in that same week that um, Alan Rickman and David Bowie passed away. So oh, his his death right. got really lost in that shuffle, right. unfortunately. Um, but later that year, maybe like eight or nine months later, Don Coscarelli did a local convention around here. And I went and I met him for a second time. And I was talking to him because they didn't do a phantasm or anything. It was just Don. And uh, he recognized me from two years previous. And so I was talking to him because he had no one because it wasn't a phantasm reunion. So, mm. like, there wasn't a ton of people coming out. And I was talking to him for a long time. And he was saying, like, you know, I really didn't want to come this year because I'm really not feeling great after Angus passing. And I just, like, I just, I don't feel like the same person anymore. I feel bitter at the world. And and he was just basically saying, that, like, the few people that came to talk to him that weekend, like, m- kind of got him back into the convention swing again and kind of made him, like pull him out of the funk of uh, Angus passing. So if you ever get a chance to meet Don, please go talk to him. It's totally worth it. He's great. No one loves their fans more than Don. Um, you will not believe he is 60 some years old because he not, does not look like it. He has not aged at all since like the 70s. It's crazy. Like It's crazy to think that he made Phantasm when you see him because he doesn't look old enough to be someone who made this movie. Sure. Um, he loves his fans. Like I said, he recognized me. He recognized my sister. He like I told him about like how I came to the movie and came to my dad and my dad how much he loved it. And him and my dad are actually the same age. And um, so I got a poster signed for my dad with the whole cast. And Don wrote on it like you're a real cool dad and you raised awesome daughters <laughs> on it. And so like he's oh, go meet Don. He's great. And like he will like 
no one's ever gonna he's never gonna have a line so you can talk to him as much as you want you know um definitely go watch his other movies too because like uh like i mean john dies at the end that's definitely a freak show movie we're gonna have to do at some point um bubba hotep also a freak show movie but um phantasm is fucking awesome i love it like i said i could talk forever about how much i love this movie um, I feel like it really gets lost in the shuffle. The tall man doesn't get the respect he deserves. I think that it's just like people like they're like, oh, yeah, isn't that the movie with the spheres or the yellow blood or like that's how they like kind of recognize it. Um, it's really original. I really appreciate how it was made. It is a true independent film. And I feel like I mean, we all wish we could have done what he did. Right. Like make a movie like this at 23 years old and 40 years later, people are still wanting to talk to you about it at a convention yeah. like that's like he's living the dream, man. Like that's all you want something to live on. Right. And that's insane to me. So you have to watch Phantasm. If you haven't seen it at this point, like you're really missing out. So definitely watch Phantasm. There it is. All right, there it is. Four. That's mm-hmm. Phantasm. Four that is a, yep. Yep, that's a freak show approved movie. Around the world. Mm-hmm. There you go. All four of us. Stamp it. Mm-hmm. Boom. Boom. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that means next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by you, Colin. <gasps> Colin, what are we watching next week? What's your Halloween pick, What's Colin? your Halloween I'm gonna pick? I'm going to pick a movie that... Isn't set in Halloween, but it feels like it is when you see it. Okay. Uh, it's Toby Hooper's The Fun House. Yes. We're be watching. I've never seen this. Awesome. Never really? seen it either. No. Really? I've never seen it. Seen it. <gasps> okay. Yeah. What? Wait. So Colin's the only one who's seen it? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, this is going to be fun. That'll be okay. good. I hope so. All right. We'll find out. <laughs> I've always, I've always wanted to see it. Yeah, me too. I've always wanted to see this Colin movie. instantly have a sense of dread right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, no. Be well, good. I always pick these movies going like, yeah, it's going to be awesome. And then you know, like, like nobody likes you, it. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no. The Funhouse. Do you fun remember, do you remember the, the Blob? We still talk about. Yeah, the Blob right. was blob great. Is an alligator. alligator. I had a, I had a pretty good summer Colin, that you year. Had a streak there. For yeah, a while. yeah. yeah. Killer was Clowns really was great. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, hopefully, I'm, br- I'm bringing <laughs> it all the back. One that brings it all down with the Funhouse. We'll see if like the mailbag tapers out. You guys have all seen the Funhouse, right? We'll find out. We're gonna find I'm out. I'm sure they have. All right. That's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>